40% reduction in all disease. That's why I want to build a sauna. A few years back, I listened to a podcast where I learned about the importance of traditional sauna. Since then, I've wanted to build a sauna, and I finally found the time to get this done. Now I'm building the sauna out of old pallets that have been broken down and wood that I bought at the local big box store for a major discount because it had a bend or a twist in it. I'm using pressure treated lumber for a lot of the structure that I got a discount of 70% off because again it had a twist or a bend in it. Other than that, everything else is from pallets that have been broken down into usable pieces. The pallet wood is everything from pine, dug fir, poplar, oak, and cedar. Now traditionally, saunas are built out of cedar wood or wood that is not as likely to rot around moisture. I chose to use what I had and nothing else. Like I said, most of the structural wood is made out of pressure treated lumber, but that's it. I suppose everything else is prone to a little bit of rot and moisture because I did not use cedar. But I'm going to be honest, building the sauna the way that I did, this sauna should outlast me. Now I specifically put the sauna fairly close to the house in easy reach of firewood because I am building it in a traditional fashion and also because we don't want to walk that far from the sauna to the house when we're done using it. There will be no power to the sauna only natural light. For that reason, I put one window in the sauna. I will not insulate the sauna in any way. I will not use any chemicals as far as sealers on the woods because I don't want those chemicals floating around when I'm in the sauna. I made an effort to use wood on the inside of the sauna that had not been treated in any way. Now our home is completely off grid. I could do this with hammer and nails without using my nail gun. But we built our home and our solar system in a way that it can more than power all of the electric tools that I'm using without any issues. Our new lithium iron phosphate battery bank has been worth its weight in gold since we switched out the lead acid batteries. I can't say enough about the Lion Energy batteries. For this reason, I was able to use my table saw. I was able to use my jigsaw. I was able to run my air compressor. And later on in the video, you will see that I was even able to run my welder 
off of our battery bank. By using these power tools, it saved me time. It took me a total of about six days on and off to build this sauna from start to finish. I've been thinking about this for quite some time. I did not want it any bigger than it had to be, but at the same time I didn't want it too cramped. I kicked the walls out at about a 10 degree angle to make a little bit more room for us as we're sitting in there. But the general dimensions of the sauna is about four feet by eight feet. Rather than insulating, I took some six mil plastic that I had, hoping to retain as much of the moisture and the heat while the sauna is in use but I did not use the plastic on the floor. My theory is that if water gets on the floor, I wanna give a place for the water to go through the cracks in the pallet board slats. Because our off-grid home is made out of dug fir siding, I ran the boards on the sauna in such a way where it might match our home. Although the wood colors are different from our home, like I said, I really don't have any intention of putting a stain or a sealer on it. Now I built the sauna structurally, very similar to how a home would be built otherwise known as 16 on center. This means that when we get heavy snow, it should be structurally sound. You will see later in the video that I do not do the typical corrugated tin roof that I almost always do on everything and the roof that I chose to put on the sauna will not allow the snow to slip. Um. So there's a potential that by the end of winter there could be a few feet of snow sitting on top of the sauna so again it needs to be structurally sound. Now we like all things rustic around Red Poppy Ranch. And again, like I said, the further I got into the build, the more I began to love this style of building. My wife Cedar came outside and mentioned a couple different times that I may have to build her a garden shed to match the sauna. Now in some of our other videos I've talked about when and where I'm going to build a cabin on the back of our property and while at some point I will build a traditional log cabin I will more than likely build a cabin just like this, probably out of pallets, before I build the log cabin, mainly because I can build this style of cabin much, much faster than I can a log cabin. So while I was building the sauna, I was thinking about how I could build the cabin as well. The best part about this entire process is this entire project came from wood that was destined for a landfill.
The idea that again we've been able to repurpose and recycle materials and keep them out of landfills makes everything about this project that much more enjoyable. Over the six days that I'd been working on the project, as my kids would get home from school, my oldest son and my youngest son both had a good time helping me work on the sauna as well. Almost every morning over that six day period, we were given another few inches by Mother Nature. This is our first full-time winter living off-grid in our home. It's taken us a few years to get to this point, so we're learning to live alongside with Mother Nature and still spend as much time outside as we can. Part of the reason I was so anxious to do this project was simply because I wanted to be outside. Because I haven't built my shop yet, and there's still many projects inside the house to finish, I've been saving the sauna build for just the right moment. Like I said, we're still dealing with quite a bit of snow. But when the sun comes out, you better believe we want to be outside regardless of the temperature. Now let me tell you about the shake roof made out of pallet boards. Truthfully, it's a lot more about looks than it is about functionality. I did put the underlayment down under the roof to try and minimize the potential for leaks, but this is probably not the best way to keep your sauna watertight. Now I decided to build a wood burning stove in our sauna out of a propane tank. Obviously, if I was gonna offer some caution, it would be around doing this.
There's so many obvious reasons why you shouldn't cut a propane tank open. And wouldn't you know it, my camera died during this process. But ultimately what I did is I went to the junkyard, found a very, very old, very thick propane tank, made sure it was first empty, removed the top, filled it up with water to displace any oxygen that was in it. And very carefully cut the first opening in the propane tank. What I didn't show on video was I also made a fire, set that propane tank in it to burn off any residual potentially flammable petroleum-based chemicals that could off-gas or potentially burn. Once I got this done, I found a piece of four inch pipe at the junkyard and whatever scrap I had around and made a damper and a chimney, allowing me to control what was going on inside that propane tank. The idea is that as the propane wood stove gets incredibly hot, we will put water on it to create steam inside the sauna. So I didn't want any seams or places where water could potentially get into the stove. Therefore, I welded everything. And again, my welder is running off of these Lion Energy batteries that we can't say enough good things about. Now again, I tried to build the sauna to be as airtight as possible, but I did not use any caulking or anything around the window or any sealant of any kind for that matter, other than the six mil plastic that I lined the sauna with. Now let me say one more thing about the propane tank. I have a friend that decided he wanted to make a barbecue grill out of an old propane tank he had laying around his ranch. They flushed it with water for quite some time before cutting into that tank. Now again, he lived on a very large ranch with many thousands of acres.
when they began cutting into that propane tank, everywhere that water had ran, caught on fire, that nearly burnt his ranch to the ground. If you choose to cut into a propane tank like I did, please be incredibly cautious. Is what they do this is every what day. driving to work looks like? Yeah. Yeah, I'm done with that. 